talked about the role of the business function, finding the people with whom you genuinely connect enough that you want to connect again, and then looking at each event within the event as an event on its own. So this is what I like to call a typical event flow. Every event has this. And you know, the organizer, organizing committee for London, they've been doing months and months and months of preparation to come here. And I know there were a lot of you who were involved in that, and that's awesome. So when you think about the opportunity to network and to get connected, as you can see from the graph, getting involved in a leadership role is your number one opportunity for the most number of connections and creating relationships with people. If you want to grow your career, grow your brand in front of uh, in this industry, then you want to be sure that you're taking on a leadership role either within your chapter or on the national level because that's really where you can, can flourish and shine. Then we have this moment of an anticipation of arrival. Who likes to have house parties? Yeah. Okay, you're all the extroverts. I used to not be able to have a house party because I couldn't handle that time. Do you know how when you say to people, come on over at 8 o'clock, anytime after 8, what time are people going to show up? 9. Oh, I couldn't handle the hour. I was so stressed, my party sucks, nobody's coming. It was like this whole thing. And then by 9.30, parties hop and everybody's there, life is great. Well, think about our personal networking, because that's essentially what that is, and apply it to any business function. There's that time when the leadership are already here, they're waiting for people to show up. Now, they're not having that awful self-doubt that I used to have, right, about uh, you know nobody's going to come because they know you all paid to be here, so you, you're going to show up eventually. But why not take the opportunity to get there early? Or if at least not early, on time. Because if there was a dinner that's starting tonight, now you're going to take buses over back and forth. You're going to go to the little bath thing at 6 o'clock. So if it's at 6 o'clock, now that's something because it's off, you know, off the, the path. So you're probably going to be there close to on time. But if you get there early, then it's like five people. And I found that it's a lot easier to go into an event and network when there are five people in a room and let the hundred people fill in around you as opposed to trying to go into a room that a hundred people are already there and then trying to have, break into conversations. So we have the anticipation of arrival, the early birds arrive. Now I will caution you on this. When you get back to your communities and you're going to events, and I know some of you are, say, in a hospital function, uh, you're looking after food services for the hospital, you might have to go to fundraisers and all those kind of hoity-toity parties sometimes. Uh, there are, and I mean that with all the love possible, I went to 241 events in one year. Don't do that. <laughs> And what I noticed, the early birds arrive, so there are two types of early birds. There are those who are the connectors who love to network, and they know that if they get there early, they're going to get connected with the leadership. And then there are those who just have nothing better to do and wanted the excuse to leave the office early. So figure out who those people are and, and enjoy that. But try to be an early bird when you can. The event energy is when all the networking happens. So that's when we're in the middle of the groove and there's all this stuff happening, and everybody's talking, and then you get called to your seat. You know you're doing it right if you get called twice. If the announcer said time to take your seats and then you're still chatting and then it's like, hello, you gotta take your seats, then you know you're doing well. Then we move into the official program. Now when you, let's imagine we're at a hospital fundraiser and the dinner, the doors open at 5.30, dinner's going to be at 7 o'clock, what time are you going to show up? You're going to show up at? 9.30. We're going back to 9.30. No, you're looking for my party. Uh, okay. <laughs> so if dinner is at, uh, opens at 5, right, dinner's going to be at 7, you know that on the agenda, then chances are you're going to get there at sort of 6.30 fashionably late, right? So instead we're going to get there nice and early. Because as soon as you show up just for the dinner portion, how much networking happens? So now actually for the dinner piece, when you get to chat at your table, you have the conversation on the right and the conversation on the left. And if you're really good, you can get a ping pong table conversation going that will last approximately two and a half minutes. That's what I figured out. That's about as long as you can sustain 10 people talking about the same topic. And then it goes back to the person on the right and the person on your left. Who is sitting beside somebody they knew before they walked into this room? 
So, when we think about networking and getting to meet new people and reconnecting with existing contacts, there is a balance between sitting with people who you already know and people who you don't. Now, I was sitting at the back table earlier for lunch, and we had uh, Sebastian and Kayla. Is that right? Ky Kayla? Ky Kyla or Kayla? Kayla. Kayla, I was right. And Joey, right? And then we had Erica, who's from London. Now, Sebastian's from Montreal. Kayla and, uh, is it Joey, right? Yes, you're from Vancouver, and so is Ben. Yes, so three Vancouverans, and then Peter Lamb, who's also from Vancouver. So we had four Vancouvers, two Londons, and one Montreal. Now imagine, as the students representing Vancouver, you can do a woo woo for that, yay. How much more powerful would their conference experience be if one went to one table, another went to another table, and then Ben was at another table? Then the collective power and connections and relationships for Vancouver has just tripled as opposed to remaining stagnant from, or not stagnant because you're deepening the relationship you have, but not, it, it wasn't expanding, it was simply staying the same. So it's a very expensive flight from Vancouver to London, Ontario in order to network with the people you were hanging out with on the plane here. <laughs>